Hi everybody, it's Amy, and today's video um, I'm going to do a tutorial on how I made the cover for this pocket notebook. I'm so excited. Yesterday I received my new Eileen Hull pocket notebook die. Love the die. And I also received um, my Dulce papers from uh, Frank Garcia and Prima. And I love the papers and I love the die. So I decided to go ahead and make, you know, a pocket notebook using the die because I was so excited to get it. And I thought um, with these pretty papers that it would be a lot of fun to do a um, shaker um, traveler's notebook cover. Isn't that cute? So I thought that would be like super fun. And yeah, and let me do, um, let me show you the die first and then I'll do like a quick flip through of um, this and then we'll get started with the, the, the tutorial. So yeah, so this is Eileen Hall's new die. It is um, 663638. And this is such an awesome die, and it um, it um, cuts the pocket notebook cover. It cuts an insert, which I don't use on this project because I use some inserts that I picked up um, for my goals for this project. Um, it cuts this adorable, adorable pen loop. I mean, not pen loop, closure and a pen loop that's super duper cute as well. Okay, so that's the die, and um, there's the information for the die. And again, it's called the pocket notebook. And then, yeah, let me do a quick flip through. This is not quite finished, um, but it's getting there. And I wanted to, you know, I'll do a full video of, um, you know, the finished project when I, when I finish it up. But I wanted to get the tutorial done today. Um, so, yeah, so, um, so, yeah, like I said, the, um, let's see, where do I start? I have this cute journaling card from the collection that says Dulce to decorate my cover. And um, I just kind of decked it out with Prima Gems and some flowers. And I love the Carol Self Horse. And yeah, and then here's how my uh, cover is definitely a shaker. And um, here's a cute little closure pen loop. I used a charm from the collection. I used um, some beads from the Dulce collection. Or no, from Frank Garcia's pearl collection to make the little pearl um, bauble to go with. Loving this little pen, uh, little closure with the eyelids, super duper cute. And then there's the little pen loop, and I have this pen from Target. And um, yeah, and then this is what the inside looks like. And I use the pretty Dulce papers to cover my inserts. Now I'm, you know, kind of um, debating here what what's to be done because if the I have four by six jot inserts and they would fit in here really well, but then I can't use my eight by eight paper pad. I'd have to use my twelve by twelve papers, and then the scale is so much bigger. And I'm loving the scale eight by eight. So I'm debating what I'm, which inserts I'm actually going to use. But these inserts are I think three three and a half by five and a half, and you, I got them at Michaels. I'm not sure if they still have them. I picked them up a year or so ago. And then here's my other insert with the insert that from Michael's planner section and here's um, this one's going to be a folder love the ticket paper and then this one um, is a plain has the plain insert the gingham, and there's the beautiful um, horse and cupcake oh my god this collection is just so so stunning and then I have another um, insert that will also be a folder. Yeah, and then here's the, the back. And as you can see, I use some um, flowers and um, put those in with my shaker too. You can put anything you want in there as long as it kind of fits in your, in your shaker pocket. And then let me give you a closer look at the spine, how that turned out. I, I wanted to hide, you know, since it's acetate, I wanted to hide some of the... Uh, tape and stuff that was going on back here. So yeah, so that's um that's my um my uh, little pocket notebook. And I'll close this back up because we'll probably be referring to it throughout the video on um, the sample. And yeah, so let me show you other in addition to the dye um some of the other ingredients for the pocket. I mean first you will need a shaker mix and so this is the mix that I made and like I said I put some pretty flowers from Prima in there and I just thought this came out so so pretty so let me pull those and show you what those um, 
So I used the um, pretty flowers from um, the Dulce collection and I used the little ones. Now I don't, you know, usually buy um, flowers for paper collections. I don't tend to use them too, too much. But I, if I buy the flowers, I oftentimes buy the little ones because I find them so useful. Um, I like to layer them on projects. And there's the number um, in case you want to know which flowers I used in my mix. And yeah, and I, you know, and they're little enough to put in a shaker mix, and yeah, I find I get use out of them. And then I use these pretty, um, pink, uh, sparkly starburst. I got these from Allie. I think it might be called Michael Anderson Store or something like that. And then I use the, um, flat iridescent circles. I, I use these cute, small mint circles, and they have the hole in the center. And I also used, um... I also picked up from the same store, the same seller, I picked up the pink ones in the mint, but I wasn't paying attention, I just destroyed my packaging, so I had to transfer them to a little cup. Um, let's see, and then the other thing I have in there is gold seed beads, and I probably just picked up gold seed beads from, um, like, old or Hobby Lobby or somewhere. So, yeah, so that's my pretty mix. I thought that came out so nice. So that's um that's important and let's see what else do you need? Um, a bunch of stuff over here. Um, you're going to need to cut with your die. Um, this is kind of critical information to make the shaker pocket. You're actually going to cut two cover, two sets of covers, a front and back cover from your die. And I used um, a, you'll need a 12 by 12 of the clear acetate to um, make your covers as the first set and then you need a 12 by 12 of a printed acetate an acetate that has a print on it I chose gold foil stars and I picked up you know I got one 12 by 12 sheet I picked it up at AC Moore and when I cut acetate I tend to use some tissue paper um, to cut it out to help protect it from damage from the cutting plates and keep it nice looking and what I do is I use like you know when you buy like um uh, you know, pretty tissue paper and there's a pretty pattern sheet on the front and you buy it and then you open it up and there's like two of the pretty pattern and a bunch of white. So I just use the white on, um, I pull out the white and I use it to do my acetate cutting. So you need pretty paper for your, um, to cover your, um, inserts for your traveler's notebook and there's no shortage of pretty papers out there. Again, I chose the, the Dulce, um, collection. I mean, thanks to all the amazing graphic artists out there and, um, there's so many papers to choose from to shoot, suit your style. So yeah, so I use the dual say. Um, see what else did I use in this project? Oh, I also cut with a die for the pen loop. I mean, this is the pen loop and this is the pretty closure. I used this um, roll of the faux uh, leather from Hobby Lobby in the mint. And my project, I had used... Um, same stuff but I used it in the I cut it in the pink but on this um, tutorial we're gonna do the mint let's see what else do I have here um, as I mentioned I um, used I made a little pearl bauble so I used the memory hardware pearls 3 Frank Garcia in the fantasy color they're really really gorgeous and then what else did I do? I also, from the Dulce collection, I used these gorgeous Satan crystals. And uh, I used the journaling cards from the collection. These are so cute, right? Look at that cupcake. And let's see. Um, I needed thread. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do on this pretty hot pink thread. Um, I actually used gold on this one. But it was breaking a lot when I was sewing, and it was getting on my nerves. And um, what was happening, you know, it was breaking and then kind of causing these kind of weird blips um, in certain points. Um, so I don't mind the way that looks at all. I think it gives it interests. But, um, you know, but it was more of an issue of uh, just taking longer than it needed to with all the breaking threads. So I'm going to try this pink and see if I have less breakage. And I think it'll pop with the mint, um, you know, doing the closure 
in the mint. So I think that'll work well. Um, to do, I need, um, I needed to use these to, to make my shaker pocket to do the sewing. I use these little clips. I'll show you how I use those in a second when we get into the process part. I needed a pen. So I bought these pens at Target. Um, I have the mint one over here and I have the pink one here and they just match really well with the Dulce collection. And let's see, I, you know, ah, jumping around here. I have uh, red line tape. I don't think I actually use the thin one, but I use this quarter inch one on the project. I always have the thin one handy just in case I need it. Um, some pretty seam binding. I use Hug Snug in co colors that coordinate with your paper collection that you use. Um, this is the best. This is the um, elastic from Hobby Lobby. It's in the Christmas section, actually. Um, I pick up some every year. I'm going to pick up, and I'm glad it's that time of year when Christmas stuff's available because I'm going to need to pick up some more. I go through this thing really quickly, these rolls. And then finally, um, my little bits and baubles here. I have them in this cup. Um, you need a charm. And I chose, um, if you want to kind of recreate mine, I used a charm. I'm going to choose the lollipop from the Frank Garcia um, Dulce collection, the little enamel charms. They're so cute. I use the um, ice cream cone here. And I also have in my little um, stash here. I am so, so sorry. My um, camera cut off. So I have to come back and just finish up this little bit going through the hardware. Um, like I said, we have the enamel charm. And then the other little hardwares I have, I have four eyelets in the gold for the, um, they're for the cute little closure. You can see them here. And um, let's see, what else did I do? And then I need a um, jump ring and um, a lobster claw clasp. So yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to shut off the video uh, myself now because I want to remove this background and put down a kind of a work surface because we're going to be working in on now at this part of the video. Thank you so much. Okay, so I have my work surface down. So we're going to make that shaker pocket cover. And to do that, like I said, I cut two um, covers. I cut one in the clear acetate and one in the um, patterned, uh, you know, the gold foil deco acetate. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is, um, you don't, you have a choice here. Um, I, you're, Basically, you're going to have two sets of spines, and I'm going to um, s stitch this to this, and then the back to the back, and um, you know on three sides, and then I'm going to put the the sequins in. Um, I am going to since I have a spine here, I'm going to, to cut this spine off. But if you wanted to leave it on and, and, you know, attempt to work it and manipulate it, you could try to do it. It's just that I'm going to cut it off on both of them and then just stitch the remaining panel um, to the clear acetate and, re and you know, rely on the spine from the clear acetate as opposed to having, you know, the spine here. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So I trimmed the spines off um, my front and back. Uh, stars covers. Oops, I didn't do such a great job on this one. So let me, it's hard to see the acetate because it's clear. So I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a trimming. It looks like I missed a little section there. With my scissors. Yeah, that looks good. So now I need to um, kind of connect this, you know, connect the front to the back so I can stitch it. And that's what I'm going to use these little these little guys. I picked these up um, with a 40% off coupon at Joann's. So let's do that. Let's get them connected. So um, I am going to, and you have to be mindful because there is a, a two different sides to this and you want to make sure that when you connect everything um, you're going to be okay. It looks like this one has a little bit of, it's okay. All right, let's do this. And it's so hard to work with this to see the um, acetate. Ugh. You know, that's the challenging part. It's so pretty, but it's hard to see. All right. Let's see. I think I got this. I'm going to clip this here. 
So we're all clipped up. And um, I am, I guess we can clip up the other one. Let's see this. I need to be careful that I'm lining. I don't know if this is an issue or not, but if you're working with pattern paper and you're lining things up, you have to make sure that um, you know everything's lining up and everything's going in the right direction and it's facing the right way. So I think I think this is how I need to do this to get everybody going in the right direction here. Yeah. Okay, so let's pin this one down. Oh, and you don't want, did I take that? Yeah, you don't really want to pin your, uh, sew. You don't want to sew this here. I'll just leave it here to keep it clean, but you don't want to sew that tissue paper to your pocket. So yes, yeah, so let me clip this one up as well. go here and I'm going to um, like I said I'm going to stitch whoopsie I'm going to stitch um, down and around in the pink thread and leave the top open so I can um, load this with my shaker mix I'll be right back hi everybody I'm back so I stitched up my um, little cover here with the pink thread and I had definitely went easier than the, than the gold thread but it did break once and now I got kind of all these spaghetti strands hanging off so let me cut those but while I kind of um you know do some tidying up on my stitching here I did want to tell you that um you know you know it might my machine might be struggling to to do this project because you know I'm sewing on acetate which is a thicker material and um, you know be mindful when you're using your machine of any warranty that you're under that you don't you know that you know that that might void your warranty kind of stitching on acetate and I'm, I wouldn't know you'd have to check your own individual warranty situation um, my machine is very old so it's definitely out of warranty and so I'm not worried at all and I'm also not worried if it breaks down because I want to do the stitching on the acetate. A heavy duty stitcher uh, stitching machine might, you know, be a little bit better for this project. I don't have a heavy duty. I do have my sewing machine is a quilter, a quilting machine, so it will um, sew on thicker materials. But um, you know, definitely, you know, the acetate might be a little bit, a little bit stressful on the machine. But I, I'm doing it because I love it, and I'll just get a new machine when when I wear this one out with my projects so yeah so now we're going to um, you know what let me stitch the other one before I put this sequence mix in and then I'll come back and we'll fill them, fill them both up okay so I'm back so I now have two um, covers here and just like let me hold this up so you can see better um, two pockets here with the stitching ready to go um, and that's you made, made the pocket there and here's the other one. And then you know we have a pocket between the clear and the deco. And here you can see where my machine kind of struggled and the thread broke, kind of sewing through the acetate. But again, I don't mind that. I think it's interesting looking at it's interest to the project in here. Here is where it kind of went wonky on this one. So yeah, so now you just take your shaker mix and you fill your, your little um, pockets that you made. Um, you know, and that's the fun part, right? This is so fun. I might not have a shaker mix, enough made enough mix 
to fill up um, two pockets, but we'll get the one done. And we'll do the other one. I can do the other one off camera. But you can put, again, like I put the flowers in mine, but you can put um, whatever you want in yours that kind of it kind of fits, you know. Um, charms, flowers, pom poms, mini pom poms, whatever fits. And what I like to do, I think I need a little bit more mix, but I like to kind of um, spread it out because it tends to clump up at the bottom to get a sense of, you know, if it was fully expanded, how much mix do I have in there. I think I'm going to put the rest of this in there. And I'm going to make another batch for the second pocket. a good amount of mix in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, both camera, I'm going to stitch this up. I'm going to make some more shaker mix and then we'll be back to finish up the cover. Hi everybody, so I am back and I have both shaker pockets um, sealed up, you know, filled with shaker mix and sealed up at the top, stitched closed at the top. And at this point in the process, what I recommend you do is you give them a really, give each one of your covers a really good shape against a white surface and see if anything shakes loose. Um, because if it does, then you'll want to figure out where your breech is and go back and reinforce the stitching wherever that is. Um, this one looks good. I don't seem to have any breeches. Um, on my last cover, I did have a little bit of a breech, so I had to go back and reinforce the stitching, which is no problem. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so now the next part is um, you gotta need you need to get these connected. And at this point in time, you have a choice to make. You can um, kind of go with how the die is designed, and you can connect... Uh, you overlap your one cover to your other cover and um, you can go kind of um, as far as here where the center dot is or if you wanted to you can trim and line up but then you're just going to have to poke if you want to like not as wide you can um, do that but then you're going to have to like trim and figure out and poke a new hole and stuff like that and I like you know I went with the um, wide with on this one so I'm gonna go with it on this one too because um, I like I like the wide width and so you need to kind of adhere them together and you also need to score a little bit because you need these guys to um, with the acetate they're um, not as quite as bendy as paper so let me score them a little bit um, let's see let's see let's see Reinforce the scoring here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do it to your other one. Let's see what's the fun of the thing. did that and now we need to use our score tape. Now the thing is that um, 
when you would hear these together, you're going to definitely see the score tape through um, the acetate. And I don't know if anybody knows of a great adhesive um, for, uh, you know, adhering acetate. Let, let me know. Um, but I'm just going to kind of do it this way. I'm going to do it with the tape, and then I'm going to kind of camouflage it with the seam binding bow on the spine. That's why I did it. Um, but yeah, if you know of a better way or a clear adhesive, let me know. I just haven't come across one. Um, and I like the strength of the red line tape a whole lot. Um, so let me, let me get that off. And then you're just going to want to line, I guess you just want to line the holes up. And edges and holes up. And this is this is hard work because it's hard to see. With the clear acetate is just a little bit more challenging. Um, yeah, I think that down. Okay, and see, I think you can see. I said you can see the adhesive. And yeah, and then you need to poke out that hole because I um or the holes again because of the I went ahead and just lined the whole thing with adhesive. So let me kind of poke that out. Okay, here we go. It's gonna it's kinda the adhesive's filling up the hole now. I'm going it through again. Now I like um, I, you could if you have a crocodile, you could use that to poke your holes through. But I like the um, I have the big bite, which is helpful for getting the one in the get holes kind of that are in hard to reach places. So yeah, hey, look at that. A great little shaker cover now. Isn't that awesome? How pretty that turns out. I just love it. Okay, so now our little, um, now that this is done, we have to kind of weave our threads through it. If you, you know, know how to do that, um, you know, you can skip the rest of the video, I guess. I'm going to weave the thread through. I'm going to make the closure, and I'm going to stitch in the pen loop next. So, um, you know, you can stick around or fast forward to whatever parts you'd like to see at this point. But that's how you do the cover. And, yeah, let's do that um, cute little closure first. Um, here's this cute little closure. I just love it. And we need the crocodile to set the eyelets in it. And we need the eyelets. So let's get those going. And pull out the little eyelets. I'm going to here. Let's get those going in there. And what you do is um, put the little eyelets in the little pre cut holes in the faux leather and you set them with your crocodile. It's okay. Put the other one in for those to do. Nice. Let me give this one another squeeze. Better. Okay. Okay, so I went ahead and I set those um, other two gold eyelets in um, in my closure. And now um, the closure, uh, you know, it's for the center. It goes to the center. So um, let me go to the picture. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. I'll trust myself. Hold on. So this shows the closer, ooh, the closure. Um, you're kind of come up and down. 
So let me do that. It's back. So I'm gonna go up and down, up, and then back down, and then up, and then back down through your um, through here with the elastic. And let's see, you have to cut a piece. That's gonna go um, through here. Um, let's see, I need to make it long enough to go around. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eyeball it. This is how this is gonna go. I want it somewhat tight. So I'm going to cut it about here. Let's see, I'll measure that for you so you have some sense of how long it is. Um, it is. Da, 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 da. Cut it about 15 inches. And we'll assemble that for the center. And if you, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but if you hear a little voice in the background saying thank you or what you doing or give me a kiss, that's my parrot. She, this is a time of day where she likes to talk quite a bit. Um, early mornings when she wakes up and early evening she likes to chatter. Boy, hold on a second. I'm struggling to get this in. I'm gonna do it off camera. Okay, I got that in. That just wasn't gonna go for me. Okay. So yeah, so now I'm just gonna put this like it's like we want it to be eventually and pull it through. And you got like a tight closure. That's pretty good. That's been good, right? Okay, it come out pretty. So yeah, so that's a good spot for us. We're going to pull that back and we're going to tie it right about there. I'm going to even slightly tighter. And then what I do is I leave the thread as long as I work on my cover. Um, eventually I will snip these down. Um, and these long dangly and down, but right now I just leave them be because I, need, I want to make any adjustments as I work on this. It gives me the flexibility to do just that. Now it's looking pretty good. So um, then the next part is, I, you know, we got to get those loops through, but I think I'm going to do the pen loop next. We're going to stitch that in. So let me grab that. So here's how I do the pen loop. I'm going to get my pen and my pen loop. Make sure it, you know, I have right about the right amount of spacing here. So um, this is let me close this. This stuff. This is gonna get stitched in to my cover um, right about here somewhere. Yeah, right about there, I think. So I'm trying to know which side I want to be my cover. Better that side. So, um, let me get stitched in right about there. So what I do is I glue it with some quick dry glue, just the ends, just at the very ends here, as you can see this. And you can use Fabri-Tac for this. This is what I have handy, and I like that. I, I love quick dry glue. It dries quick. And because you're going to be stitching this in, I don't think this makes a big deal if you use Fabri-Tac, but Fabri-Tac's ideal kind of fabric adhesive. Um, so then I just kind of hold that together for the quick dry to set and hold it because what ultimately what I'm going to do is sew it in here and having the ends glued together makes it a little bit easier to sew because if they weren't glued together they can kind of go off and off the rails a little bit there and, and not line up good but this just helps keep everything lined up while you're while you're doing your stitching 
So we'll hold that for a sec. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that down with a block for a second. And okay, so that's drying one line. That was drying. I went ahead and got my um, lobster claw clasp on my charm off camera. So that's ready to go. And yeah, and then we're going to take this piece and figure out eyeball where we want the pin to go. So let me see this. Kind of line things up. The closure and everything. Um, okay. So we're going to need this. Hi everybody. So I went ahead and I got my um, pen loop stitched into my cover. So we're ready to go. Okay, so off camera I went ahead and I corded my um, cover with my gold elastic thread. Yeah, and then you can see in the spine, because the cording is starting to camouflage the adhesive really nicely. But what I did was I went ahead and um, made a bow with pretty seam binding and colors that coordinate with the paper collection. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, a bow to, to this one as well, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I tied my bow in, and the only thing I did is I make sure that I pull my closure, when I'm tying my bow, I make sure I pull my closure through to two different colors so that it can wrap around and over easier, like so. And make some little adjustments. And, yeah. So we're in a home stretch here, guys. Um, this was fun. So I'm going to attach my little, cute little Olipop charm to my um, closure. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. how cute is that? Right? And now we're just going to pick a um, journaling card and put it in there. In the top of there. So, um, yeah, what did I do with the, the journaling cards? Oh, well, give me a second. I have to go find them. Okay, so here are the journaling cards um, that come with the collection, and we have to pick one out. So, let's see. Let me pull off this. Gooey, gooey wafer seal here. I'll pick one out. I think I want that cupcake though. They're so pretty, right? This is pretty. I like that one. That's a contender. Um, that one's pretty too with the teapot and the cupcake. That one's pretty. That one's kind of clean. This is the one I think I want to do. I think I will test. Let's see. Oh yeah, I love that. Okay, so we're going to use the cupcake. And I, on this one, I just decorated my journaling card with some jimmies. So let's do that. We'll pick this one. This one. Let me see. I'm not sure which jimmies I want to use on this. This one, and maybe the pink one, the pink ones, these are so pretty. Oh my goodness, look how pretty those are. So, so pretty. And then I also put on um, a flower. I put one of those little flowers on my flower. So flower. I think maybe the cream one will look prettiest, but let's see. We'll try a couple different ones out. And yeah, the cream one because I love the contrast. Just using some of my art glitter glue. Let's flower. And there we go. Super, super pretty, right? I just love, love, love this paper collection. So, yeah. so there we go. We have the two covers. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you um, use the tutorial and you make any pocket notebooks or anything, um, go ahead and, and shoot me a message or, or tag me or somehow let me know so I can take a look. I'd be very curious to see. Thanks a lot for watching today. Bye.